It has been nearly two months now since the third precinct was abandoned and ultimately burned during the riots that followed the police killing of George Floyd. Tonight, a new perspective on what happened that night from the voices of the men and women who were in the middle of it all. The Fox Eye investigators obtaining police radio transmissions that give a minute by minute account of what happened and how things could have been so much worse. Here's Tom Lydon. By mid-afternoon on Thursday, May 28th, the deck was already stacked against the third police precinct. And police radio transmissions from that day paint the stark picture. Surrounded by protesters, the only escape route, out the back alley, already in jeopardy. To get any more, it's going to be hard for our escape route. We now have over 20 protesters in the south alley, getting close to blocking us in. And there's already confusion. Is anyone copying this? About the game plan and who is calling the shots. I, I need to know who's in charge of the details here. Was there a general sense that there was a plan for that night? The plan was to flee. The plan was to flee. Yeah. Officer Richard Walker is a Federation board member who works out of the weapons unit of the 3rd Precinct. He says officers were instructed that morning to clear out their lockers. The precinct would be operating that day with only a skeleton crew. He believes the message was clear. I've never seen a look of desperation, a look of uh, a sense of loss of hope, and more importantly, a look of disbelief that we were giving up a precinct. It was necessary that we're, we were taking all precautions uh, and planning for the worst while hoping for the best. And yes, a worst case scenario was the possibility of having to evacuate the third precinct. Mayor Jacob Fry says to understand what happened Thursday night, you need to go back 24 hours to the looting and protests in the area the night before, Wednesday, when he received a call from Minneapolis Police Chief Madaria Arredondo. Mayor, I'm, I'm asking you to call the governor and ask for the National Guard. I hung up the phone with the chief. I immediately called the governor. Uh, and I requested the National Guard. This was a guard-sized crisis and demanded a guard-sized response. The mayor sends Governor Walls a formal request in writing Thursday morning. The governor activates the National Guard that afternoon. But the call-up will take time, and time is running out. Behind the scenes, a fierce argument between city and state officials. Governor Walls and his team want to see a detailed plan, believe Saturday will be the peak of the unrest, and argue the National Guard is a poor choice to handle civil unrest. The city says it can't develop a plan without knowing resources available, and they need help now. And so the city's backup strategy at the 3rd that night is to de-escalate the scene, defend but don't engage, and free up officers to protect the rest of the city. We didn't want a scenario where we have all of our officers doing one thing, which is protecting a precinct, while other portions of our city burn with no assistance. That was not an option that I would have taken. Early on, a strategic decision was made to keep a very tight footprint around the perimeter of the third precinct. The only entrance in for police officers would be through this gate to the back parking lot. What they did not fully appreciate at the time, this would turn out to be their only escape route. By 4.07, protesters are probing a fragile perimeter. We have uh, information that there's somebody on the lake street, lake street side of the station with both colors cutting the fence. We were just told that our uh, friendly manifestor phone was on the southeast corner of the 3rd precinct. We'll be leaving in a few minutes. There's going to be no buffer. Police begin using rubber projectiles, known as 40s. They're throwing eggs. We're throwing things at the guys on the line out there. Go ahead and use your 40. At 518, two people are stabbed at the target across the street from the 3rd Precinct. They're trying to barricade us in. Without waiting for paramedics, the injured are loaded into squad cars under a hail of debris. Officers ask for permission to use tear gas. We are being hit with bottles and rocks, you name it. Permission to use CS. You are authorized to use CS triple case at your discretion. Guys, we got him in. Got him out. And police soon realize there's a reason the protesters are showing up everywhere they are. They are monitoring their radio transmissions. People are listening to this channel, and uh, then they follow us to these locations. By 8:43, the MPD is dealing with multiple hotspots downtown. A large crowd, estimated at 1,500 
Is it Washington and 3rd Avenue, slowly moving east? A smaller crowd, is it Nicollet and 4th Street? And yet another large group, is it Hennepin and 5th, moving towards the 1st Precinct? Hundreds of state troopers in riot gear are downtown at this point, but never deployed to the 3rd. Steve is wondering where they are needed. They're currently at 6th and Hennepin. Do you think the rioters were trying to spread the MPD thin? I do. We were defending an entire city with, you know, six or 700 officers, uh, but against thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Again, some of them protesting peacefully, many of them not. And it wasn't a matter of, of planning. Uh, it was a matter of simple math. We did not have the numbers. Back at the third, the situation is deteriorating fast. Uh, we got individuals breaching the gate at the third precinct. We also got people trying to breach the front doors. And they're through our front door. By 9 p.m., there's a SWAT team on the roof and a strike team guarding the perimeter. And we got heavy rocks, bottles, people, all directed at officers in the rear lot. And they're surrounded by smoke and fire. The auto parts store, the liquor store, the pawn shop a couple blocks down the street, all fully engulfed at this point. By 9.15, officers in the front line know they're losing the battle and ask to use small explosive scatter rounds that disperse gas, like buckshot, but still considered less lethal force. They're shooting mortars at us, and they're doing so, uh, it from a distance of about maybe 75 to 100 yards, and we can't reach them. Can we escalate our use of force to deploy scat rounds? Negative on the scat rounds. Total force, again, negative on the scat rounds. There's another plan in place, standby. But according to those who were there, there was no plan. I'm a little confused about what we're talking about. And they were running out of ammunition. You are authorized to use CAS triple chase to push that crowd back. We would, but um, we don't have it. Anyone at the roof of the third precinct who can give me some information, please call me. And soon the protesters seem to be coming from everywhere. They breached the northwest corner of the front. They're coming in, they're coming in the back. At 932. Chief Arredondo calls the mayor to tell him they've lost control, can no longer maintain order in the city. The mayor gives the order to evacuate the precinct. You had somewhere in the range of 15 to 20 officers inside the third precinct. You had thousands of people outside the third precinct. The doors had been busted, people were moving in, hand-to-hand -hand combat was definite, and the likelihood of very serious injury and death was high. Death to either one of our officers or somebody from the general public. That was not a consequence that I could have on my watch. But first, they had to escape. With protesters inside the precinct, police swept the building to make sure no one was left behind. We need to move, we need to move. A lot of debris coming in. Dry team floor members, return to your vehicles. So I'm finishing clearing the building. We have to evacuate right now. We need to go. As of right now, we can leave South Town. We're going to lose that opportunity in about 30 seconds. We got to go. We are sitting ducks here. They're about to breach the back gate. Then they discover the back gate's been padlocked from the outside. They can't get the gate open. Video posted on YouTube shows squad cars crashing through the back gate giving cover to the officers who are escaping on foot. We're actually intermixed with the cops on foot, trying to give them a uh, fighting chance here. It's like the precinct is on fire here. As we, we leave uh, the dispatch, I think uh, you can start your roll call. Bring a couple more squads up to the front. We're going to convoy our officers safely to the uh, new staging location, please. We're protecting firefighters. They have the scene under control, but if uh, protesters start making their way east, we won't have enough. And then at 10.13, Chief Arredondo, who's monitoring the scene from a couple blocks away, gets on the radio to announce defeat. It's a citywide tone right now in our loss of the 3rd Precinct. The 3rd Precinct has been compromised. Why didn't we have a, more, uh, a better plan to evacuate everybody safely instead of squad cars ramming the gate to get out 
and literally officers running next to the squads to leave. That was my desk. Officer Walker went back the next day to photograph the aftermath, a ransacked police precinct. He says many of the officers who were there that night sent final text messages to loved ones in case they didn't make it out alive. When the order came to evacuate, I can assure you that I don't believe you'll find one Minneapolis cop that was out there that thought that that was the right decision. The mayor believes it was the only decision. Imagine if one of our officers was killed in the line of duty during the defense of the third precinct. Imagine if multiple officers were killed. Imagine if a single person, a single member of the public was shot and killed. Consider what would have ensued after that. It's not something that our city would have handled. Just before midnight, the state will take over command. By Friday morning, the state patrol and National Guard will reclaim the gutted 3rd Precinct. Questions about whether the fall of the 3rd could have been avoided will linger for years. A police precinct abandoned in America. A symbolic victory for the rioters and the beginning of a reckoning across the nation. For the Fox 9 investigators, Tom Lydon, Fox 9. Minneapolis Mayor Fry says the 3rd Precinct should be rebuilt at an estimated cost of at least $10 million, but he's not sure if it should be rebuilt at that same location.